In other words, this is not a promise to every person. It's a promise to every believer. This is not a comfort to people who don't know Jesus and don't have His Spirit within them. Previously, he was talking about the fact that we will suffer. But he said that the glories of our future are no comparison to the sufferings that we have in this life. And so many things we're going through, these trials, they can seem so huge. And yet, what God is going to do with us in our future, if we could just grasp that, and we can understand that God is in control, and God is going to work all things together for good, and that's a promise to all of those of us who are the called, and it's according to His purpose. And that's where we get in trouble. We have to step out and realize He's got a purpose. We may have a purpose, but the promise is for His purpose, not our purpose. So your purpose may get trampled. Your purpose may go up in flames. It's only when you are in His will and walking in accordance to His purpose that the promise is that all things will work together for good. You see, there are conditions on this. It doesn't mean all things without any conditions or any qualifications. He gives you the qualifications. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. So what He'll do with you, if you're not walking in His purpose and not walking according to His will, He'll smack you in the back of the head, wake you up, make something blow up, whatever it takes, and then move you and get you where you ought to be. And in the end, when we stand before Him, all things will have worked together for good. And that's a promise. Real quick, I want to show you something that I found very uh, interesting, First Samuel 23. And I think this kind of gives us a picture of God that... i got to tell you, there's two extremes on this whole thing of God and how He works in our lives. On the one extreme are the Calvinists. And the Calvinists say that God has everything mapped out and it's just going according to His script. And He's called certain people to be saved and go to heaven, and He's damned the rest. Now, they like to play games with you. And Jenny and I and Mike and I, we've all talked about it at length. And they, they, they're dishonest. And they'll say, well, God called certain people to save, but the rest, He didn't damn. He just, you know, they were already on their way to heaven. Well, that's just dishonest. If God has called certain people to be saved and then said, the rest of you I do not call, then He is damning them to hell. There's no two ways about that. Then on the flip side... Well, he's not one that always saved. Yeah. Yeah. And then on the flip side is the Arminian. The Arminian then is on the other side. He says, well, God's pretty much just kind of um, at our mercy, so to speak. I mean, He's watching and He's making, He's trying to make everything work out, but He doesn't know what's going on all the time. And, and you know, he's, he, he doesn't have total knowledge of everything. He can't know the future. And it's called open theology. It's a big thing now. Clark Pinnock's one of the big names in that, open theology. So you have these extremes, and then you have the Bible. <laughs> and that's why we don't call ourselves Calvinists or Arminians. We're Bible believers. We just believe it the way it says. Now, there are some questions we have that we can't find answers to because God's bigger than my pea brain. I'm never going to figure Him out completely. But I know what He says, and I know what the Bible says about Him. And here in 1 Samuel 23, here is David, and David's on the run from Saul. And David inquires of the Lord. And in chapter 23, 1 Samuel 23, in verse 10, it says, Then said David, O Lord God of Israel, thy servant hath certainly heard that Saul seeketh to come to Keilah to destroy the city for my sake. Will the men of Keilah deliver me up into his hand? Will Saul come down as thy servant hath heard? O Lord God of Israel, I beseech thee, tell thy servant. And the Lord said, He will come down. Then said David, Will the men of Keilah deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, They will deliver thee up. Then David and his men, which were about six hundred, arose and departed out of Keilah and went whithersoever they could go. And it was told Saul that David was escaped from Keilah and he forbade to go forth. Now, if you take the Calvinist view, then there's a problem here. Because God said that Saul will come down and the men of Keilah will deliver him up, but that never happened. So the Calvinists have a real problem. They've created a God in their own image. A God that 
says this is going to happen and it happens without any exception. That's not Bible. It's not the God of the Bible. They're, they're going off and thankfully most Calvinists I know beyond this issue, they do preach the Gospel and even in spite of themselves, they do see people saved. I'm thankful for that. But when they teach about God, that's called theology proper, then they get off base and they lead people into error. Well, the other side of that is the Arminian view. God is He doesn't really know. And what they would take this passage and say, see, God thought He knew and it didn't turn out that way. Now, what kind of a God is that? I mean, that's a confused God who is powerless. I mean, that, that's not the God of the Bible either. And here's what you see. God is all-knowing. That means He knows everything that could happen, everything that will happen, all choices in front of Him, all choices in front of you, and He already knows how it's all going to play out. But if David had stayed in that city, the men of Keilah would have, yeah, would have given him up to Saul. And, but because David left, it turned out different. Now, God wasn't surprised by that. But what we do have is a God who is a little different than the God that you hear preached in a lot of the Calvinist pulpits. See, the, what we got is a difference between a normal relationship with God just like you would have with me or anybody else, or this high uh, theological idea of a relationship with God. If you came up to me and you said, you know, if I'm here and uh, uh, Matt and Charlie show up, you know, are they going to have a place to sit? You know, and I say, well, no, but we'll get seats. Well, you could choose to leave and then they'd have your seat. Or you can stay and we'll get more seats. You know, and that's the way it is with God. When He answers your question, He just gives you the answer. It doesn't know, they mean that He doesn't know the outcome. It just means He's dealing with you on your level as to what's going on in your life. And He told David, basically said, yeah, you're here. Saul's going to come down. Will they deliver me up? Yes, they will. So David leaves. They don't. And God's not shocked by it. And you can, you know, what theologians do, and they always do this, theologians screw up the Bible and make it too difficult to understand. God, it makes it just as easy as it is with your relationships with other people. The only difference is, you know, I'm fallible and I don't know everything. You're dealing with Him, He's infallible, and He does know everything. So now let's go back to Romans 8, and just keep that in mind. And I always tell everybody, I, I've got more and more to where uh, I don't even read or check out commentaries that take strong positions on either one of those views. Uh, I, I, it does. I like people who will admit, you know, one of my f uh, favorite people to listen to is J. Vernon McGee. And I don't agree with him on everything, but I love the fact that he's, he's so real and he's, he's of a Calvinist background. But he'll tell you all the time, he says, now my Calvinist friends think they've got this all figured out. He says, they don't know anything. <laughs> you know, but then there's people who are called Armenian who really aren't. But like you know, we've talked about Chuck Smith. We've talked, uh, you know, uh, Dave Hunt. You know, they call him an Armenian. He's not really. Peter Ruckman. They call an Armenian. He's not. He. These guys are all guys that fit in that middle on these issues. When they talk about God, they talk about him the way the Bible does, not the way Augustine did and Calvin plagiarized, and not the way... By the way, if you ever look it up, Jacob Arminius, who the Armenians call themselves after the, his name, he didn't teach what they even teach. If you go back and read Arminius, he didn't teach the things that Armenians teach today. But because they were the opposite side of Calvin, like Arminius was, then they all took that label. That's a long story, and it, it trust me, way too much ink and air has been spent on that issue over the years. But we just want to stick to the Bible. And the Bible gives us this promise that it will work things together. And now here's where we, you can really trip up if you want to jump on somebody's bandwagon and call yourself a Calvinist or Arminian or whatever, is in verses 29 and 30. Go ahead and read those, Mike.